December 1996, the very first chapter in the UK, Chapter 1, launched. This event starts the year-long celebrations of this 20th anniversary for the UK. Are you ready to party? Yes! I can only hear that lot, so are you ready to party? Yes! Good. Then we can begin. Jen. More of that later. Oh, I do have some... Uh, some people aren't going to have such a good day. Uh, particularly one person might not have a good day if they don't get this back. You look very dark. So, if you've lost an Audi... Um, <laughs> yeah, I know there's some volunteers. You might have to sort of... Um, oh, yeah. I, I do also have a mobile phone as well. So, um, what I'll do is I'll return them to the ladies in the foyer and you can collect them uh, from there. Okay. I want to see who's here today. Um, you may not be aware, we do have some international visitors, and I want to see who can make the most noise, and we'll start with the international. So, uh, if you're here from uh, overseas, can you please make some noise? Yeah! Very good, very good. Okay. Have to be aware. And uh, it, is, uh, it is from overseas, but very much part of our team from Ireland. If you're here from Ireland, please make some noise. Oh, come on. There's more of you than that. Come on. All right. Um, I'll give you a little hint, right? If you're from Scotland, you sort of know what's going to happen next. So hang on. Bear with me. If you're here from Scotland, do you want to make some noise? Anybody in from Wales? Yes. Thank you for bringing your family, Guy. Um, anyone from the north of England here? Yes, the northern powerhouse is here. <laughs> and anybody here from the south of England? Yes! Of course. <laughs> See how we did that? Um, I do need to mention the uh, fire exits, getting back to more mundane matters. All oh, right, you couldn't work out whether you're north or south. Are we going to go for the Midlands? Oh. Right, before we do that, anyone in from Cornwall? <laughs> just, just checking. It's Benson. Right. Anyone in from the Midlands? Yeah! Well, I'll just make a note for next year. <laughs> Don't let in the troublemakers. Um, right. Um, right. Back to mundane things. Uh, fire exits, I do need to mention them. They are in all of the rooms. Um, there are no drills planned. If the siren goes, please leave in an orderly manner. And collect in the collection point, which is car part one. Car Park 1 is actually in Surrey, <laughs> that way. Any of you stay in the hotel will know exactly what I mean. It's quite a way. Um, but it is, it is up along, along there, and of course the hotel staff will guide us if that does happen. Uh, phones. Uh, we did have a couple of incidents yesterday, slightly embarrassing for the people that it happened to, where their phones went off, so please make sure your phones are on silent. Um, we don't tell people to turn their phones off anymore. Uh, that's because we want people to tweet, and the uh, hashtag for today is... And, and for the whole year, uh, BNI UK is 20. So please feel free to tweet. I'm assured that the uh, internet service is working today. There is also a Twitter board available um, in the uh, Beaumont suite, which is the room um, just behind here. And we have uh, people going around with a Twitter board, so you can have your photograph taken in the board uh, if that's your kind of thing, if you're an exhibitionist. That's not the kind of thing that I'm going to be doing. <laughs> Talking of photography, um, you've all been given a, a leaflet. Our photographer, one of our photographers today, um, for Ian Wilson from Barrett of Co. have got a fantastic offer. Uh, star, five star prizes, 100 runner-up prizes, but it does end at 6 o'clock today. So if you want to um, uh, take advantage of that, if you haven't seen this leaflet, you want to get one, again, go back to the foyer and you can enter. It's a, it's a free draw and you can do that. All right, who's in the room today uh, that has a trade stand here? Can I ask you to please stand up? Trade stands over here as well. Fantastic. Please give these guys a round of applause. They are uh, they're part of what makes the conference possible, and um, I really encourage you to get around all the trade stands. If you haven't quite noticed, they are some immediately out here, but they also do snake around the back and go right down to the end, where you will also find the B&I shop is down there as well. Um, so you can pick up some stuff... Uh, down right down the bottom. So please do visit them, support them. 
Uh, also, in the back of your workbook, uh, the ideal referral requests for all of our trade stand exhibitors. Now, some people call BNI a network, but effectively, we are a referral organisation, aren't we? Yes. Yes. So, if we can uh, use today to find someone to refer, would that be a good idea? So a place to start, as, as well as all the other things that you might be doing today with each other, is that back page for our um, exhibitors and our trade stands, please. In terms of organising one-to-ones, um, you're not necessarily going to close business today, but what you might be starting to do today is create some relationships, create some partnerships, maybe. And I'm sure lots of us have got stories about people we met at events like this that have turned into really powerful business relationships. And that could start today for you if you start to engage with people. There's a, a GAINS worksheet available for you on page 23 of your manual, and you can make notes on the inside cover of your workbook. With regards to one-to-ones and to help you plan them today, we do have a change in the schedule. Um, due to some health challenges last week, uh, Phil Berg will not be speaking today. We, we are really sad about that. Um, but what we would be doing instead is we'd be packing some extra value into the sessions this afternoon from the other speakers. And the change in the schedule you need to notice, nothing happens until this afternoon, but the afternoon break is now 3 p.m. to 3.30, effectively. So 3 p.m. to 3.30. So if you've got a one-to-one -one booked in that time, you'll have to just adjust the timings uh, to make that happen for you. All of you this morning have been given power team stickers to identify uh, your power team groups. This can be a great place to start when I'm talking about those referral partnerships to speak to someone who's also uh, in an industry, and because of the abundance of business that is available to us, um, these relationships can be really profitable. Um, there are six. So red is for property, green is for finance, black for business services, yellow for weddings and events, orange for trades, blue for health and complementary therapies, and for those that aren't wearing one, it's because they don't want to be put in a box. Doesn't mean you can't talk to other people, of course, but we just hope that those stickers help you um, sort that out for you. Um, today we have that ideal B&I combination. The opportunity to do business, but also the opportunity to have some fun. Are you up for that? Yes. Okay, let's get going then. I'd like to welcome to the stage the National Director for B&I in the UK and Ireland, Charlie Lawson. Good morning. Good morning. What a delight to be here at the headquarters of the Professional Speakers Association uh, amongst some of my fantastic colleagues. In my introduction, you heard about my five businesses and uh, the, the fact that that's an ambition of mine, but it's also a challenge on our time. I'm going to cover today uh, some of the uh, uh, key points that I've worked out as to how I managed to cope with that. But first of all, a story. It was 1990. I was at Richmond Rugby Club, one of the oldest rugby clubs in the country, 1861. I sat in the dressing room waiting for my team members to turn up. I wasn't sure who was in the team that day. I was with two of my friends. It was a good start. Uh, Richard and Nigel, they were there with me. Um, Nigel was one, um, one of the uh, flankers. They look after um, the girls. And Richard was one of the girls uh, playing out on the wing. He's super fast. But I was really interested who else was in the team. And there was one person in particular I needed to find out who that was. That person played hooker. And the hooker in a rugby team throws the ball in to people like me that catch it. The guy that walked through the door that day playing hooker was a guy called Peter Winfield. I was so pleased that Peter walked in. Why? Because Peter had this ability to throw the ball into my hands. In other words, he made me look good. And people would say, you had a great game, Julian, you caught so many balls in that line-out. Well done you. And I'm thinking, it was mainly Pete. I put my hands up, he hit my hands. He made me look good. He got me thinking about how teams work and, and exactly how people work for each other in teams. When I first went into business, I used that expression that lots of us use, I'm going into business on my own. Anyone here went into business on their own? Yeah. But the reality is, none of us actually went into business on our own. The reality is, all of us 
have a team. And we had a team actually, whether we like it or not. People are part of our team, they're uh, clients. Now, you definitely need some clients, therefore you've started a team already. But you have suppliers, you have friends, you have family. In fact, you have quite a big list of people that will all affect your success. These people will all affect your success. Lots and lots of different types of people here. You may not have all of them. Some of them you may aspire to have in the future, some of you, some of them you may choose to. But loads and loads of different people that are involved in our business success, including our family, including our friends. For me, life and business blends together. Don't believe in work-life balance, I believe in work-life blending. And I enjoy all of it. So it strikes me that if you're going to have a team, I'm going back to my rugby analogy, if you're going to have a team, then select your team. Select who it is you're going to work with. Now team selection in a, rug, in a rugby uh, match starts on a Tuesday. Starts on a Tuesday, coaches will sit down after this Tuesday session and select the team so they can train on a Thursday. And they can train together. Now second the same in business. You can select your team and then you can train together so that when you perform, you perform to the best of your ability. You don't have a game on a Saturday. And of course that cycle goes round in sport. Uh, but in business it doesn't go round maybe quite so quickly. But it certainly does go round. Who's good for you now might not be who's good for you in six months, 18 months, two years. You might want to change the people that are involved. Uh, for those of you thinking that you can do this, you, you can't change your family all that easy. Just to the point. So how do you select? This is a rugby team selection. I like to think of the first eight in this list. So this is 15 plus some reserves. I like to think of the first eight, mainly because when I was playing, those are the most important people. I know that I have to maintain relationships with close eight people in my life. And they're gonna get down on my sheet first. But of course there are other people involved and there'll be reserves as well. So when you're selecting your team, and when I select my team, what, what is it that I do? What is it I think about? What are the attributes I'm looking for when I select who is my personal team? Who is important to my success? Because I'm never in business on my own. What are the things that I can look at? The first one is energy. Energy is really important. I just don't mean, um, are they able to get out of bed in the morning? Can they run around the block? I mean, is their energy similar to my energy? You know when you first meet some people, you just click? That's energy. You just click on something. You reflect on each other. Anyone know what this might represent? Attitude. And this is really number one for me. Is their attitude the kind of attitude that I want to be working with? Because I don't want to be working with anybody, no matter how good they are. If their attitude isn't right, it doesn't reflect what I want. Experience. Is their experience the kind of person that I need right now? Remember, I think these things will change through time. So I'm evaluating. Is their experience right for me? And lastly, time. Not so much have they got time, but are they prepared to give enough time to the relationship for me and for them to make it work? So one of the questions I ask you today then, who is in your team? Who is in your team maybe that you haven't even thought about was there? And do they know what it is you're looking for? Do they know what it is that you need for your success? Are you contributing to their success? Have a think about my relationship with Pete and on that day, me and him worked together as a team. He made me look good. I'll tell you in return, what I did for him, hookers, what they need is a little bit of extra push in the scrummage when the ball comes in. That makes them look good, because people think they've hooked the ball back. What I've actually done is pushed him over the ball. So in return for one thing, I give him something else. So my key message to leave you with today is, have a think about building your team up, i.e. selecting the right people. Have you got the right numbers of people in there? Building it up. But also, build them up. Build them up. Make them look good. Make them look great. And that will pay dividends in your personal and professional life to come.
I really liked the comment that I got just a minute ago, which was, um, I like this, this is making my head hurt. Um, so, so thank you very much for putting that amount of effort into uh, thinking about this stuff. So one of the key things is you haven't really got much time tonight to perfect this, but I want you to understand what we're trying to achieve. So the 10 questions that other people can ask on your behalf, on their checklists, you'll have to train people on. And they won't ask all 10 questions, at least they probably won't, because they'll have a whole bunch of questions th themselves that they're asking people. But if they can use one or two of your questions in the right place, they can generate referrals for you, and they can do that on a regular basis. Hello, everybody. This is a short video to explain what to expect from the Influencers Boot Camp in Swindon on the 6th of October. We have some great speakers lined up, including a keynote from Peter Sylvester, the Harley guy. Peter will give you an insider's glimpse of the company and giving you some insight into how you can be like Harley. How you can use some of the tactics that they use to build up a global brand much bigger than selling bikes. We also have the champion professional speaker and my good friend Andy Rogers. Andy won the Professional Speaker Association Speaker Factor last year. You get the chance to hear that award winning speech plus a new one that Andy's crafted for this year. Two for the price of one. Well, in fact, two for no price as the event is free. And there'll be lots of time to network around our trade stands and find a great new contact for your business. As you might be able to tell, I'm on holiday at the moment in the lovely Menorca, just so that I can be full of energy on the day. I've got lots, lots of other details to share with you in the lead up to the event, including our other speakers and the chance to get yourself a VIP lunch with Peter and priority seating. So please keep checking back. I look forward to welcoming you to the Influencers Boot Camp, getting to know you and having four hours full of fun and learning. Until next time, I wish you a very profitable week.